Thank you. Mr. President, to sponsor the measure, may we recognize the distinguished gentleman from the city of San Juan, Senator Jingoy Estrada, as chairperson of the Committee on National Defense and Security, Peace, Unification, and Reconciliation to deliver the sponsorship speech. To our dear colleague from the city of San Juan, Senator Jingoy Estrada is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, my distinguished colleagues of this August body, as your chairperson of the Committee on National Defense and Security, Peace, Unification, and Reconciliation, it is my distinct honor to sponsor Senate Bill Number 1849 under Committee Report Number 23 for an act amending Sections 2, 6, 10, 11, and 15 of Republic Act Number 11709, otherwise known as an act strengthening professionalism and continuity of policies and modernization initiatives in the armed forces of the Philippines by prescribing fixed terms for key officers thereof increasing the mandatory retirement age of generals, flag officers, providing for a more effective attrition system, and providing funds, therefore. The committee report is a consolidation of Senate Bill 1601, authored by this representation, and Senate Bill number 1603, filed by our Honorable Senate President, Mig Subiri. Your committee also took into consideration House Bill number 6517, referred to the Committee on January 20, 1987 Philippine Constitution, provides that, and I quote, the armed forces of the Philippines is the protector of the people and the state. Its goal is to secure the sovereignty of the state and the integrity of the national territory. Further, Section 5, Number 3, Article 16 of the 1987 Constitution states that professionalism in the armed forces shall be a prime concern of the state. Towards this end, several laws were passed to continually enhance the professionalism of our armed forces, the latest of which is Republic Act No. 11709, signed into law on April 13, 2022, and took effect on July 1, 2022. The enactment of RA 11709 was intended to obviate the revolving door accommodation on promotions and to allow the AFP leadership a longer period to institutionalize sound policies and implement reforms that will redound to the improvement of the AFP by prescribing fixed terms for key officers and by increasing the mandatory retirement age for generals and or flag officers. While this representation agrees with the intent and purpose for the passage of Republic Act 11709, the unintended consequences, I repeat, the unintended consequences in implementing the said law are too far-reaching. It has caused bottleneck in the promotions of officers and is expected to cause unnecessary and unwanted attrition within the ranks of the armed forces of the Philippines. Upang mailarawa ng mas malinaw ang magiging epekto ng RA 11709, may isinagawang actuarial modeling o simulation. Ito po ang mga datos na lumabas sa nasabing pag-aaral. Sa ilalim ng dating umiiral na batas o Republic Act 8186, sa loob ng limang taon, nasa tatlo lamang po ang bilang ng one-star general natin na napipilitang magretiro dahil hindi na ma-promote. Ngunit sa ilalim ngayon, ng RA 11709, ulitin ko po, 93, 93, o siyam na po tatlo ang magiging bilang ng mga one-star general na mapipilitang magretiro sa susunod na limang taon. Ang attrition ng ating one-star general sa ilalim ng kasalukuyang batas ay 31 times higher kumpira sa dati. Ang mga two-star generals naman natin, Six times higher ang magiging attrition rate. Mula sa dating lima, inaasahan nating tatlumput dalawa o 32 ang mapipilitang magretiro dahil sa attrition sa susunod na limang taon. Sa three-star generals naman, ay three times higher ang attrition rate. Mula sa dating tatlo sa loob ng limang taon ay magiging siyam ang ating mga koronel two times higher, mula 68 
ay magiging 134. Pero hindi pa po ito ang pinakamalaking dagok na dala ng Republic Act 11709. Tinatayang nasa 15% rin ng ating enlisted personnel ang maapektuhan ng unnecessary attrition na bunsod ng RA 11709. Sa kasulukuyang 82% ng Armed Forces of the Philippines o nasa higit na 135,000 ng ating kasund kasundaluhan ay binubuo ng magigiting na enlisted personnel. Inaasang hindi bababa sa 20,000 ng ating mga enlisted personnel ang mapipilitang umalis sa serbisyo sa mga susunod na taon dala ng kanilang forced attrition na nakasaad sa Republic Act 11709. Ito po ay ilan lamang sa mga dahilan ng so-called grumblings sa hanay ng ating sandatahan lakas. The concerns of the brave men and women in the armed forces of the Philippines are very much valid and understandable given the perceived uncertainty of their military careers na halos buong buhay nilang pinagtrabahuan. Although unintended, Republic Act No. 11709 has caused uneasiness demotivation, and adversely affected the morale of our troops. Ginoong Pangulo, batay po sa iba't ibang mga survey, laging ang armed forces of the Philippines natin po ang pinakamataas at nangunguna sa mga approval rating, satisfaction rating, at trust rating. Malinaw po na mahusay at maayos nilang ginagampanan ang kanilang tungkulin bilang tagapangalaga ng sambayan ng Pilipino at ng ating bansa. Ganito po ba ang dapat natin isukli sa kanilang mga sakripisyo para sa ating bansa? Mr. President, we do recognize the hard work and diligence that were poured out by our esteemed colleagues from the previous Congress, and many of whom are still part of the present Congress in crafting RA 11709. I myself, I'm convinced that RA 11709 is a good law which sought to institute meaningful reforms and finally resolve the revolving door policy that has hounded the armed forces for so many years and severely hampered the long-term planning, stability, and strategic direction of the defense establishment. Nonetheless, it is incumbent upon me to listen and respond to the grievances of members of the members of the armed forces. Hindi natin pwedeng isantabi, isantabi na lamang at ipagwalang bahala ang kanilang mga hinaing at punto hinggil sa epekto ng pagpapatubad ng batas na ito. The Senate Bill, therefore, seeks to amend five provisions of Republic Act 11709, which will definite, definitely address and put the so-called grumblings to rest. Foremost is for matters concerning our enlisted personnel be removed from the coverage of RA 11709. We will revert to the previous system where the promotion, separation, and maximum allowable tenure of our enlisted personnel will be governed by the issuances of the Department of National Defense and the Armed Forces of the Philippines. This will afford the DND and AFP flexibility in adjusting the policies concerning our enlisted personnel depending on their developing and expanding needs. The Senate bill also reintroduces a one-year period of prohibition for promotions, which was effectively removed by RA 11709 and reinstitutes the previous tenure in grades of colonels, commander, and brigadier generals and commodores. Officers may only be eligible for promotion to the rank of brigadier general or commodore or higher if he or she has at least one year remaining of active service before compulsory retirement. This will address a major issue in the implementation of RA 11709 by preventing photo finish promotions of generals and flag officers despite having a few months or days or days left before retiring. Reinstituting the one-year prohibition was a result 
of the consultative meeting between this representation and the junior officers of the AFP conducted last February 3, 2023. The reimposition of the one-year prohibition will mean that a colonel with a present tenure in grade of eight years has only seven years within which to be promoted to the rank of Brigadier General. A Brigadier General with a present tenure in grade of three years has only two years within which to be promoted as Major General. Given the limited number of officers in the aforementioned positions, a period of seven years for colonels and two years for Brigadier Generals within which to, to compete for promotions is quite short and will lead to their unnecessary attrition. As earlier stated, the attrition rate for colonels under Republic Act 11709 will be doubled, and for Brigadier Generals, it will be 31 times higher. This computation was arrived, was arrived at without taking into consideration a period of promotion ban. The attrition rate will even be higher should we impose the proposed one-year prohibition. Thus, the reversion to their previous tenure in grades under Republic Act 8186, 10 years for colonels and five years for brigadier generals is in order. This will allow them a fair and equitable opportunity to compete and to be promoted to the next rank. And for the sake of clarity and for the record, Mr. President, your committee is not against attrition. We believe that weeding out non-performers and lame ducks in the organization is very crucial, if not at the heart of ensuring professionalism and maintaining only the best and the brightest, the cream of the crop in the armed forces of the Philippines. Limiting the tour of duty to five tenured key officers and allowing other key office officers lateral movements to key positions is also being sought. The AFP Chief of Staff will still be accorded a maximum tour of duty of three years. The PMA Superintendent will still have a maximum tour of duty of four years. The tour of duty of major service commanders, however, will be shortened from three years to two years. We are still fostering the continuity of policies for the tenured key positions, but at the same time, affording the subsequent commission classes a fair and equitable opportunity to compete for promotions to these positions. All other key officers, namely Vice Chief of Staff, the Deputy Chief of Staff, Unified Command Commanders, and the Inspector General will now be allowed lateral movement provided that an appointed to a tenured key position will be covered by the one-year prohibition on promotions. This will grant our major generals and lieutenant generals a fair and equitable opportunity to compete for promotions to key positions, which was indiscriminately and unfairly deprived of them by RA 11709. <coughs> Moreover, the AFP Board of Generals, or the BOG, will not be bound by restrictions, particularly the prohibition on lateral movement in determining the best qualified candidates to these key positions. The introduction of a, of a graduated age of compulsory retirement for generals and flag officers is likewise being espoused by the Senate bill. This is a balancing act, as it allows the AFP to maximize the services of our senior generals, but at the same time affords the younger colonels or generals the opportunity for career progression. Under this Senate bill, the compulsory age of retirement for one-star general, generals is 57. For two-star generals, it will be 58. For three-star generals, it will be 59, but if the but if the officer is occupying a tenured key position, the maximum tour of duty will take precedence. It is worth noting, however, that among the recommendations gathered by this representation during the consultative meeting with the AFP junior officers is to merely impose 57, and it not graduated, 
as the uniform age of compulsory retirement for generals and the flag officers. The determination of 57 was arrived at given that there are incumbent generals, flag officers who have surpassed the age of 56. Finally, the Senate bill seeks to reintroduce the percentages on officer grade distribution provided under Republic Act 9188, but the basis will be the Armed Forces of the Philippines Table of Organization. Under RA 11709, the Secretary of National Defense is mandated to ensure the decrease in the number of our generals, flag officers, from 190 to 164 before April 13, 2023. This representation respectfully submits that this significant decrease is not in keeping with the demand of the times, given the continued modernization of our armed forces. The AFP needs to be dynamic and highly responsive to the complex, volatile, ambiguous, and evolving local, regional, and global security landscapes. It will be more prudent, therefore, to reinstitute the, percentage, the percentages provided under Republic Act 9188, particularly on the number of generals and flag officers, and to give the DND and the AFP leeway in determining their force structure by basing the said percentages on the AFP table of organization. While we are granting the DND and the AFP more flexibility to respond to the current and future security threats, the grant is not without sufficient safeguards. Percentages are in place and allocations for additional positions are still to be justified within, with the Department of Budget and Management. Mr. President, as to the application of the amendments, we are proposing this representation respect, respectfully submits that the tour of duty, compulsory age of retirement, and maximum tenure in grade shall be made to apply to those appointed or promoted on July 1, 2022 onwards or during the effectivity of RA 11709. Doing so will immediately address the issues and concerns, including the bottleneck in promotions following the implementation of RA 11709. Otherwise, our troops will continue to suffer as the effects of these proposed amendments will only be realized two or three years down the line. As to the issue of impairing the vested rights of those appointed or promoted during the effectivity of RA 11709, the Supreme Court, in a long line of cases, recognized police power, which is verily lodged in the legislature, as a valid limitation to the exercise of vested rights. The exercise of police power requires the concurrence of a lawful subject and a lawful method both of which are readily apparent in the issue at hand. Mr. President, the passage of the Senate Bill 1849 under Committee Report 23 will address the gaps, issues, and unintended consequences brought about by the implementation of RA 11709. It will also result in a more dynamic and highly responsive armed forces capable of adapting to the demands of the present time. Most importantly, it will definitely usher a level of improved morale within and among the ranks of our armed forces. Ensuring a level playing field for career advancement is the least we can do for our soldiers, airmen, sailors, and Marines who continue to lay their lives on the line protecting the Filipino people and defending our beloved country. In closing, may I just say and emphasize that this piece of legislation remains consistent with the spirit and intention of RA 11709 that is anchored on meritocracy and professionalization while providing the organization with the necessary room for flexibility, ensuring stability, and improving the morale in our armed forces. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much, our distinguished colleague.